Motivating Thoughts for Teacher Success, Episode 481. The 10 Minute Teacher Podcast with Vicki Davis. Every weekday, you'll learn powerful, practical ways to be a more remarkable teacher today. Today, we're talking about some motivating thoughts for teachers with my friend, Pat Hensley. She's Looney Hiker on Twitter. We're trying to remember how long we've been friends. I had my 12-year Twitter anniversary the other day, and I think that she and I have been connected at least that long. Her book, The Successful Teacher's Handbook, will be coming out in May. So, Pat, give us a motivating thought because it's Monday and we need it. One of my top things that I I always think about is watching out for burnout. I don't think teachers take care of themselves enough. They're always so caring and worried about everyone else that they don't think about themselves, which is why they burn out so quickly. How do we watch out for that? We work so hard, it's very easy to work through lunch. We don't eat right. We don't drink enough water. We just want to get as much work done. And working through lunch and working harder is not working smarter. It's definitely not. I know that when I get exhausted and, uh, you know, I started this in college just because I would lose so much sleep in college of saying, okay, you know, my mental talk to myself. Okay, Vicki, you're not feeling great. You can't trust your emotions right now. You need to get some sleep. And it's amazing just what sleep will do to help you think better and be a better teacher. Right. And that's why even when we're teaching all day, that lunchtime, we need to take that mental break and just give our times to recuperate, even if it's 15, 20 minutes. And if you can find somebody to laugh with, all the better, right, Pat? That's right. I always find someone. <laughs> and that was the other thing was make sure you surround yourselves with positive people. It's very easy to go in the teacher's lounge or the copy room and everybody whine and moan and complain, but that negative is is very catching. You you know, you just pick up on it. So instead of that, you need to look for the positive people to look at things more positively. You know, Pat, and sometimes in our careers, it's harder than others to find those positive folks, isn't it? That's right. And the media doesn't help because everything on education is always so negative because that's what sells. So we really got to look for the positive. We do. You know, I actually changed hairdressers quite some time ago because every time I got my hair cut, my husband said it took me three days to recover (laughs) (laughs) because it was not a very positive place. And, um, you know, this is just so important, but it's not easy. And I guess the other question is, are we a positive person people want to be around to? Well, (laughs) if you're looking for the positive people, then you're more aware of your own behavior being positive. Now, does that mean that you have to be Pollyanna and everything has to be happy and you can't have anything going wrong? Or what do you mean by positive? No, I think if you have a problem or a conflict is asking other people like to help look at it in a positive way. How can you make it more positive? Have people help you try to figure out a way to go about it more positively. If you're just negative and complaining, you're not looking for a solution. That's right. Okay. Give us another motivating thought. We're going to watch out for burnout. We're going to try to surround ourselves with positive people. What else? Here's another thing. And people always think I'm crazy is communicate with your students, parents often develop a relationship with them because if you're calling them often, you don't have to talk long. You're sharing with what's going on. They're sharing with what their child likes in your class or doesn't like. And when you're feeling down and sometimes you need a boost, you call that student's parents to brag on them and they're actually going to lift you up when you need it. That is so true. I think sometimes, you know, teachers get frustrated. And early in my career, I felt like, you know, only time a parent ever calls the office is when they have something negative to say about me. But then I realized the only time I ever called a parent was when I had something negative to say about a student. So when I started saying more positive things about my students, parents reciprocate. Oh, I know. One of the heartbreaking phone calls I had was when I called up a student's parent to brag about them. And this mother cried and she said, are you sure you're calling the right house? Nobody has called my home to say anything nice about my child in 10 years. Oh, and it does break your heart that 
just, wow, I, I don't even know what to say. So I guess that the more a child struggles, the more they need that positive phone call home, don't they? Right. And then the parent needs it too. And when you're bragging about their child, they go to their child and say, you know, your teacher bragged about you. That child comes back to school and works even harder. So it breaks that negative cycle again. As long as we remember that we're saying authentic, genuine, deserved praise. Right. And that makes me look for something that the child is doing right. It's very easy to see everything they're doing wrong. That's right. Okay. So these are all very motivating. Give us another one. Don't try to be perfect. When I first became a teacher, I wanted to be the perfect teacher and it's impossible, which only made me feel depressed, unhappy with what I'm doing. Don't hide your mistakes. Own up to them, learn from them, try to fix them. Well, and you've been teaching more than 30 years in special needs. So these are things that you've learned, aren't they? Oh, by experience. (laughs) Pat, could you tell us what do you think is a big mistake that you wish you hadn't made and you hope teachers don't make? I didn't expect enough of my students with special needs when I first started. I kind of let them use their disability as an excuse. And actually some parents helped me learn that their child could do more and I needed to expect more. And I started raising the bar and watching my students actually rise up to my expectations. And I realized I had to change my behavior before that I could even help them change theirs. Students will never go past the expectations you have. Mm -hmm. So how high are those expectations, you know? Right. And and you have to look at each individual child. You can't expect everybody to fit, you know, the square peg in the round hole. Everybody's not going to fit the same thing. So Pat, when you have experienced the burnout and the heartache, how did you keep going? Because you've made it more than 30 years and that's tough. <laughs> and not many retire from special ed and public school either. Um, I had a good support system. I had my family. I had other teachers and I had a hobby outside of education. I had something else that I just needed to take a break from teaching. I love teaching. I mean, it it was my life. It still is. But I like gardening. I like knitting. I spin my own yarn. I have other interests just to give my brain a break. Oh, and that's so important to have a hobby. Of course, my hobby has to do with teaching. It's this podcast. (laughs) (laughs) And we love it. And blogging. Oh, goodness. So as we finish up, this is a motivational Monday, Pat, and teachers are driving in the car to school or they're washing their dishes after fixing breakfast in the morning or putting on their makeup or whatever they're doing. Could you give them a little pep talk about the importance of keeping on with this job that is so important? I think the big thing is remembering that you're making a difference in someone's life. You might not know it today, but I've had years later, somebody come up to me and say, you might not remember me, but you made a big impact on my life by something little you've done. Like I didn't even teach one girl in my classroom. She came to me and said that she smarted off to me and I called her home and talked to her mom. And suddenly she realized a teacher was here who cared about her and didn't just send her to the office or give her detention, that I took the time to call her mother. And she said, it changed my whole life. Wow. And that was a negative experience, but you turned it into a positive because you called her mom. Right. And I didn't know about it till like 20 years later when I saw her with her own child. Wow. You know, I've even had people come up to me and I hate to say I didn't recognize them (laughs) because they change so much when you teach them. And then they would say something and I'm thinking, is that me you're talking about? Mm -hmm. You know, did I do that? And it does mean so much. So the book is The Successful Teacher's Handbook. It's coming out in May by Pat Hensley. Thanks, Pat. Thank you, Vicki. Thank you for listening to the 10-Minute Teacher Podcast. You can download the show notes and see the archive at coolcatteacher.com forward slash podcast. Never stop learning.